It'll be one to go this time, Fox. Coming to the green, buddy. Coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, go, go. Take, take, take. Go, 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 go. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. We're going to roll into our uh, winning race team of today's Camping World 300 in the NASCAR Nationwide Series here at Daytona. And our race winner is Tony Stewart. He drives the number 80, HendrickCars.com Chevrolet, crew chief Lance McGrew, and team owner Rick Hendrick. Congratulations. Uh, Tony, right now you're uh, you know, having a good week, good weekend uh, leading into tomorrow's race. You had to feel good about the victory today. Yeah, it was ecstatic about it. It's, um, you know, the first time that I've got to drive for Mr. Hendrick and, and Lance and all the guys at HendrickCars.com. And just a, an unbelievable run today. We, uh, you know, we never really got to run with a huge pack yesterday or the last two days in practice. And wasn't quite sure exactly what we were going to have today. And uh, we, we had a, a great start to the race, got ourselves in the, in the top pack there and were able to stay in the lead draft. And, and uh, we're a little bit free, but we were really good about third back and uh, you know we got up and led some laps before that first caution and uh, came out and, and Lance did a great job uh, all day of m making changes to the car to where toward the end uh, we finally got it snugged up enough to where I could do what I needed to do and and uh, you know I, I thought I made the the <coughs> worst call move of the year uh, I was gonna get that award for the coming into the pits with about 28 to go there but uh, you know it ended up actually saving us at the end we, we got really good track position got ourselves back up to third and got track position and restarted second so uh, you know, just got fortunate that we were able to get back through the pack like that and uh, you know it was because we had a good car we could run through the middle in, in times that guys couldn't go through the middle three wide and uh, just the car drove good and, and had you know all the guys at Hendrick Motorsports uh, in the engine department the, the thing was so good it just would roll the corner and I could roll through there by myself and not really have to have the push uh, when we were three wide like that and, and could make ground so uh, you know thanks to those guys for uh, giving us a great engine package to, to let us run up there like that. Lance uh, talk about some of the strategy that uh, that played such a role there late in the race. Well, he kind of let the cat out of the bag because I was looking like a real hero there at the end since <laughs> we won the race. Everybody thought that I made that call to come down pit road, but I didn't well, really did. I, I mean, I, I was just taking the blame <laughs> in case it didn't work. Uh, no, I, the car was really good all day, just a little free out front. and We just kept snugging it up, snugging it up until he was uh, happy. And when you get a guy like that in your race car and you get a perfect car, or even in this case, it wasn't even perfect and he still won with it. So good day. Mr. Hendrick, uh, talk about uh, the win today and how it was uh, having Tony drive for you out there this afternoon. It, it was a it was it was a real real special special win. We've talked about doing things, and uh, I guess in '96 I called him and he said uh, he wasn't ready yet. And uh, you know, real proud of what they've done with our team. And then we were going to launch this 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 weekend with our the site with HendrickCars.com and all of our stores um, were advertising it, and we uh, figured out yesterday that if we didn't make the field, we'd spend a lot of money, and uh, we didn't have any points. And but uh, it it it's, it was really special, you know. After watching him win this race so many times on Saturday, it was good to have him in our car doing it. And uh, Lance, uh, you know, he and Ricky started the the Bush team, and uh, you know, one with Brian, and to have. It's been a long time since we won our Saturday race in Daytona, so it was a real special feeling, and you know, just uh, that's all. I mean, it was just it couldn't have been a, a more picture perfect deal with us, uh, with the automotive group, and uh, you know, to plan a promotion in this kind of economy and it doesn't work, you're you spend a lot of money for nothing. So thank you, Tony, you saved us. But uh, it was a great race. I didn't have any idea we were going to win it there at the end. Thought we might get wrecked, but uh, it was it was a good one. Questions now for either Lance, Tony, or uh, Mr. Hendrick. If you have one, raise your hand. Hey, would you not call me Mr. Hendrick? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm almost sixty, but don't. Yes, sir. Rick would be great. Oh, we good, Rick. All right, thank you. Down here, anybody have any questions for Rick, Tony, or Lance? Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, Dave Robin NASCAR dot com. Tony, we can't see what you see or feel what you feel. And sometimes we got to ask, and I feel I hate that, but. Tell me how those good years were sticking up in three and four on that last lap. <laughs> well, not very good, <laughs> but good enough. I mean, uh, 
you know, Kyle was on, Kyle got to our bumper right after we got off a two down the back stretch, and, and I knew that we were going to be able, I thought we were going to be able to pull away from the field further than that, because normally you get two cars hooked up like that, and we've seen it at Talladega where two of them, when they get the bumpers locked, can normally just drive away from everybody. And we didn't get as big a gap as I thought we would, but I was hoping that he would turn loose of me before we actually got down in the corner. And I was surprised that we, we were able to chase it as far as we did, and, and he never turned loose of us. I mean, he drove halfway up the racetrack, still glued to my bumper, uh, instead of just staying on the line and trying to go around us. So uh, I wasn't going to lift, though, because I knew if I lifted, I was going to get wrecked for sure. But, uh, you know, I definitely needed all the real estate that I had there. But uh, trust me, I was... I would have loved to have had just a little bit more grip there at the end. Who has the next question? Raise your hand. Let's go with uh, Mike and then over here, the gentleman right here. Yeah, Tony over here. Um, when you made the uh, decision to go in for tires, what were you thinking about? I, I looked behind us, and, and Lance had told me to stay out and, and said that the 5 and the 88 were going to stay out, and, you know, those were our teammates. And, and I, I should have stayed, but I, I looked in the mirror, and I've been – I've been caught out so many times in the past, and especially last year, that we just had such rotten luck all year that there were so many times that we planned on staying out and the whole field would come down and get tires, and then we would, would get swallowed back in the pack. And, and I saw the whole a bunch of cars. I mean, there were only about three or four cars that I saw behind me that kind of stayed up enough on the racetrack that I thought that I knew they were going to stay out, but the rest of them stayed down on the <coughs> line like they were coming or that they were seriously considering it. And I just, for some reason, felt like I didn't, I just didn't want to get caught out. And not get tires, and then the thing go to the end, and uh, you know that I got really, really lucky on there because I had a big possibility of screwing us up there. But you know, even before the caution came out, we got ourselves up to third, and uh, you know, it, when Lance had made the the changes there at the end, the stop before that, it got us right where we needed to be, and and that let us drive through the field to get up and get that track position back. And I'm not sure that if if the caution would have come out, you know, five or eight laps earlier, if the outcome might have been different, but. You know the way it came out with seven laps or six laps to go on the restart there it gave our tires time to cool down a little bit and uh, you know let us have enough grip to to at least have it for that small amount of time to get to the end question right here gentlemen the orange and then we'll move uh up this way yeah rick Heron with the fort worth star telegram tony can you talk about the emotions that you had today just from the the lows of this morning to you know winning a race was it hard to separate yourself when you got in the car today from the frustrations from what happened you know i think i've and i know it probably doesn't make sense but i've done this for 29 years now it's my 29th year racing and i think i've ran so many different types of cars that you know after practice was over and darian and i kind of got the game plan of what was going to happen and what we had to do to to finish getting our car ready and what we had to do to to get ryan's car ready uh, you know I, when i went back to the bus and put this uniform on and you know when you see hendrick on it you switch gears real quick in your mind and you realize that hey you got it you got a job to do and and you put what happened in the morning behind you and you focus on the task at hand and uh, you know going out there and seeing mr hendrick come to the car and, and lance and their guys i mean it they they were pumped up they knew what this morning was like and and it was it was very disappointing this morning i mean i was so frustrated i almost couldn't see straight but you know seeing how good a job the guys did i, I guess almost the positive to the negative is i was so proud that we had guys from Hendrick Motorsports come down. Richard Childress came down and, and personally told me that if we needed a car, if we were in, in a bind on chassis, that, that you know we could use one of theirs. Uh, the amount of guys that came over and said, hey, we don't know what we can do, but if we can help, let us know. And, and that's made me extremely proud of how many guys in the garage were willing to come up and, and lend a hand and, and lend their support. And uh, you know, if they, if they don't like you, they won't offer that hand. So uh, it made me feel real fortunate that We've got a, a bunch of friends in this garage area that wanted to help out. and uh, But I'm really proud of our guys, too. I mean, they, they, they never got down. I mean, as soon as it happened, they were, they were working hard to get the backup car out and uh, you know, get everything switched over to get it exactly where the primary car was at the end of practice yesterday. So uh, you know, to get back on the racetrack in a timely manner like we were, I was really proud of Darian and our guys. And, and uh, you know, I know it was a little different situation for Ryan and the U.S. Army car. I mean, they, they didn't have the luxury of just bringing the backup car out as quick as we did. So, uh, but, you know, I think we found something this morning with both cars that, uh, you know, I was struggling getting my car to suck up in the draft, and we finally found something that helped that. And Ryan's car uh, yesterday wasn't handling quite as nice as he wanted, but it would suck up real good. So we kind of found a, a common balance between the two and his car was driving good today and sucking up good and mine did the same thing so uh, you know I feel comfortable because of our package that we have that uh, we're going to be able to duplicate that in both cars for tomorrow too.